To another episode of Mom's Basement. What's good? What's good? How you been? I have been great. I've been playing Halo all day. It literally just came out today. Halo Infinite. Uh, this game has been put back over and over and over again. You know how like when the Xbox uh, Series X came out and the PlayStation 5 when that came out, Halo was supposed to come out the same time. Well, like, I guess I, like I, haven't, fucking... I haven't played it yet. First of all, did you see the face skin? I'm I'm wearing it, dude. My I post it on my Instagram. Dog. My dog. That's awesome. Um, tag yeah. me in those, bro. I'll repost you. You got to tag yeah. me in that shit so I see, so I can see it. Um, but no, that's that's legendary. But yeah, that that was gonna be my first question because I haven't played it yet. Listen, this is the thing that these fucking games kind of lost sight of is what made them popular in the first place. And Call of Duty's probably the most relevant example of this. But they've. They just, they do too much. You know what I'm saying? They, they fucking, they start adding jetpacks in and weird shit and Halo did the same thing and then they just fall off. They're like not great games. Um, is it reminiscent of like Halo 2, Halo 3? I like it. I like it. It's kind of similar, but it's, it's different. Uh, the one thing that I have a problem with is, you know, the playlist, right? Like back in the day, you'd go and play Team Deathmatch, right? Or Slayer or Social Slayer or whatever. There was cool playlists Social like Slayer, that. That's so funny. Well, Dude, those things, those the, things kind of got introduced. Like Social Slayer didn't, wasn't a lot, wasn't launched with Halo 3. But never mind. What, what was your point? My point is, is now they have two playlists that you can play into ranked and big team. All right. And it's just a, a bunch of games. Like there's no filter. You can't like shut certain game times off that you don't want to play. Well, I kind of like, like that. They introduced it like that because they're not trying to do too, that sounds like they're not trying to do too much. They're like launching it with, with simple games and they're probably going to add new ones in. But what about the let's go, let's go back to your original question. You said, is it reminiscent of like halo two, halo yeah. three, which by the way, no. those games made you Keemstar. for anybody who doesn't know that halo three yeah. made Keemstar. <laughs> Which is actually, it's insane. <laughs> you remember when we first met, what you sent, you sent me something in the mail. Uh, yeah, I sent you a Halo 3 disc. Signed, but with Keemstar signature. And honestly, I thought it was the fucking coolest thing ever. What year was this? 2012? Maybe 11. Dude, yeah, it was dude, early. that's crazy. Me and my homies would finish like lacrosse practice or whatever the fuck, go home, play Halo, and then watch watch you and two bucks and all those fucking guys just fuck with kids talk shit dude it's it, crazy it's so insane but anyhow to yeah. get back to it it's like dude when you, when you grew up with halo one halo two halo three some you sometimes you just want to play team deathmatch you just want to play team deathmatch and you know you're forced in this new halo to play all the different game types and whatnot it's all right it's not that big of a deal the mechanics the mechanics the, have, the the running around shooting the the meat and potatoes of the game does it feel like halo 3 halo 2 or does it feel like something totally it, different it does. And look, a lot of people are pushing to uh, play on PC or play on mouse, play on keyboard. Is I it, get it. Is it strictly on Xbox? No, it's on it's on PC. It's on Steam. You can download it on That's Steam. Fire. That's fire. That's cool. And you can use mouse keyboard. I get it, but it's like, dude, you want that original feel. You want that controller vibe of it. So, Oh, that't what you're I saying. Don't, yeah. Well, yeah. that's cool. So today's been a good day for you then. A great day. Today and was dude, a great yes. day for me too, bro. I I swear, Keem, me and you are so connected in that sense. Do you know what I'm talking about? You ever feel that with, with when people? we're up, we're up, and when we're it's, down, we're down, but bro. It, we're always up and down at the same times. You, have you have you noticed that too? I have. Like over the past month or so, we both kind of clearly been in a funk and just dealing with personal random shit, whether it be business, personal, whatever the fuck, right? And before that, when you had your girlfriend, I was dating my girl and all that shit. Things were fucking, things were like really, this was when I was making, you know, really came up on honestly millions of dollars with the NFT shit. Like that was right in the, really the breakout moments of that. So obviously I'm fucking hyped on life. You're stoked. You're out in LA. You know what I mean? And today was a good day. Today was just, it just Dude, felt different. I'm not even joking. You can ask my assistant who's over here. Uh, she's got headphones on, so she can't hear me. I literally said to her multiple times today, man, I'm happy. I'm just happy today. It makes no sense. Felt the same nowhere. way. What do you think that is? Do you think there's any like real, like, you think there's like, 
not science, but do you think there's like some kind of like wavelengths and fucking just because I, I'm like that with certain people, you know what I mean? It's just, it's always been interesting to me that you can walk into a room with somebody you don't even really know or never really met, but you're instantly drawn to them for whatever reason. And it's honestly, it's, there's no other way to describe it other than a vibe. Cause it could be male, female, you know what I mean? It could be like little kids, for example, you ever meet a little, a little ass kid and like, it's a fucking annoying little kid. And you just don't, aren't, <laughs> you just aren't vibing with the little kid. There's the shit that they're doing and saying is just irking you. And then other little kids are fucking cute and awesome, and you want to fucking play stupid little games with them and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a weird <laughs> example, but like it doesn't matter who it is. Sometimes you just fucking vibe. Like a vibe is a real thing. What do you think about no, that? No, it, it it really is. It really is. So I don't know, man. Dude, I, I know I'm coming off of a really, really big story. Uh, not big view wise, but like, dude, th- I, you didn't get a chance. I know you didn't see it. It happened on Drama yesterday. I got to tell you this story. This is wild. This is insane. And it's right up your alley. It links all the type of stuff that you're into, right? So there's this esport player. All right. I was, He's you know, straight. it's so He's- funny before you get into the, the story of it, because I actually haven't watched the video but i saw you in the drama like group chat on twitter talk about it yeah and i saw your tweet about it and i was like i really want to watch this video i have to remember to watch this video after and then i pulled it up once and then got distracted pulled it up a second time got distracted never never got around to watching it it just came out right yeah 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 let me just tell you everything yeah. that happened because it's wild right so this this kid hits me up and his name's jeff and he's on this uh esports team called extra and he goes, listen, man, he goes, you know, you know, LaRay, right? Big popular TikToker, right? I have he no goes, idea who that is. You really don't know who no. LaRay is? Keem, I'm not a TikTok guy. Yeah, but he's massive and he's, I don't know. Anyhow, long story short, his friends allegedly sexually assaulted this kid. I was like, what? Like, t- what happened? Right. And he goes, can I be anonymous? And I go, why do you want to be anonymous? Like he goes, I will, cause he told me he already filled out a police report oh, who and already did a rape kit. A random person? A random kid. Okay. He, he filed a police report. He did a rape kit, right? And a, he got sexually male assaulted or female? by LaRay's friends. A male. Male. Okay. So by male, other male guys. sexual assault? Yes. Okay. Right? Continue. And so he sends me the police report. He sends me proof of the rape kit. And he goes, I want to be anonymous. I'm like, why do you want to be anonymous? I mean, this is already kind of pop, like you got a police report and all that other stuff. Um, and he goes, well, I'm afraid I'm going to get kicked off my esports team. I go, what? He goes, yeah. Like when I talked to my esports team, like, you know, they were telling me to keep this hush hush. They don't want to bring a negative light on the what? team. I'm like, bro, I was, I lost my mind. I go, give me your number. I got on the phone with him. I'm like, dude, I'm telling you right now, you're not going to get kicked from this team. I go, you know who's in trouble? Not you, but this team's in trouble, right? Yeah. Um. So anyhow, he tells me the story. Basically, that's like, insane. Yeah, dude, it was wild. It was yeah. it, it was insane. We'll get to it, but first, uh, you know what happened to him? Uh, his buddy is bisexual. He's straight. He's got a girlfriend, right? His buddy, who's bisexual, is talking to th- this other, you know, gay influencer or whatever. Uh, and they're talking about like going all to a party together. So they invite them over to the crib first and this kid who so, can, who hit you up about it um is, is has his name been publicized yet yeah his name's uh jeff uh, and is he gay Extra. he's not gay he has a girlfriend he's not gay at all okay so so him and his bisexual friend go and hang out with these other two gay guys right one of them's called um uh sir the star and the other one's called raffi so they're all kind of hanging out right they get there. They say the vibes speaking about vibes, the vibes just seemed a little weird. And they, they were acting like they were drunk already. And they're like, you need to catch up. And they're giving him a bottle. So they're like peer pressuring him to drink or whatever, him and his friend. So he's drinking, he's drinking, he's drinking. And he's like trying to give the bottle back to them. Like you take a sip. They're like, Oh, we're already lit. You got to catch up to us. Type of shit, Right. Anyhow, long story short, uh, you know, him and his friend, they pass out drunk and they wake up They're their shorts were like, were literally cut. Like the one kid couldn't even find his shorts. They wake up in the bed next to these two. And they're like, what the hell? Like, you know, what's happening? Uh, call the police, get the rape kit. And, you know, obviously there's some evidence that things happened to him. No way. Uh, 
Yeah, dude, it's, it's Damn, wild. that male on male, bro. That male on male hits different. Uh, I don't mean and, to laugh or anything. This is obviously a super serious situation, but like, what? That's a wild story. And yeah, to throw so, in to throw in the whole thing about so this kid's on an esports team and this fucking they told him don't speak about this or you're getting kicked out. Well, so the thing the thing with the influencers, the the influencers that allegedly did the sexual assault, dude, the police are handling that. You know, the story's public. That's yeah, cool. Of course. But the esport thing, that's what I really focused on on my drum alert, because I this just blew my mind. I go there is no way that they told you to be a hush hush about that. He goes, yeah, they did. He sends me a text message. All right. Between him and the, the esport guy. And dude, uh, I'd ha- let me pull it up so I can read it. And this kid wasn't even the, the craziest part is this kid isn't even hitting you up to like expose his esports org. He's just, he's doing what he thinks he's supposed to be doing, which is yeah. remaining anonymous for the sake of his esports org. And you kind of just stumbled onto this information. Yeah, and I yeah, go, that's I, go wild. I go, Jeff, I go, please trust me. Like, you know that I'm like, I've been in this game for a long time, right? And you know me, you're a fan of me or whatever. I go, Jeff, can you please trust me? I go, I promise you, I promise you, you're not in trouble. This, your esport organization is in trouble. He goes, okay. He goes, okay, I'll come out public. And sure enough, uh, well, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. First, let me just share this with you, this uh, this text conversation. I'm pulling it up. Now, this right text conversation now. is between Jeff, extra, the kid, and on the e-sport. owner. And, and the, the owner and the of e-sport, the okay. The e-sport owner, Conley, right? Okay. So, so this is the text message. He goes out to him and he, uh, he goes, man, I want to tell my story. You know, I, I'm looking for some support from the team or whatever. And uh, the e-sport owner says, I want you to post about it. Tell your story. The only problem is extra being associated with it is going to shed a ton of negative light on us. So he responds like, oh, man, he goes, bet I won't post it because, you know, he doesn't want to get in trouble with his eSport org. Well, he didn't, flat owner, out t- he didn't flat out tell him not to post it then. That's a little different. But no? he said it's going to put a negative light. Yeah, which now, is not a good thing to say, but it's in a private conversation. Is that all he said? Listen to the next thing that okay, the okay. owner of the eSport org says. He goes, but I don't want to hold you back from your story because of extra. So if you want to temporarily disassociate okay, uh, for the time being so you can do it on great terms, up to you. Okay, Don't yeah, so, so passively, aggressively being like, you, you can't share the story and stay on the team at the same time. Which, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the bingo moment. What a fucking idiot. Like, but there's more. There's talk about more. missing the mark. Bro, that's the funniest part about like people being so careful about what they do and what they say and how they like how they prioritize shit is sometimes people think that they're making the right decision based on what, how the public's going to react, but they miss the mark so hard that they completely fuck it up like that. Like talk about missing the fucking mark. Are you kidding? Dude, completely. And so listen, there's more, there's recorded calls of them in a discord, having team meetings and stuff. And the owners are screaming at them saying, why are you telling another member on the team about your rape story? They have loose lips. This is going to get out like type of shit, something along those lines. That's not a quote for you expose this this discord conversation. Fuck. Yeah, dude, bro. I put this whole esport team on blast on drumler. Okay. So you know what happens after my drum? I really got to watch this shit. This is what happens after my drum alert comes out. All right. First of all, I gave them two hours, the team, two hours to give me an official statement. They give me some stupid official statement about working with authorities and blah, 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 blah. And these are serious matters. Like some statement that says nothing. You know, you're on an esports yeah, team. Yeah, like yeah. Some dumb statement, right? Instead of taking any accountability. So I read their statement, right? The story comes out. Listen to this. In a matter of less than an hour after it comes out 21 members of the esport team quit left. yeah quit just left well those guys those okay. those, those that's awesome not their that, main it's sponsor, not a, nothing by the way nothing about this shit is awesome it's just cool that they stood by their homie and like rode for their homie that's dope their main sponsor which is how they funded everything was razor razor came out with a dropped public them. tweet dropped them Oh, wow. The CEO, all right, not the guy that was saying this, but there's two owners and two CEOs or whatever, right? There's two people that are in charge. 
the one that did that didn't say this stuff, he came out with a statement and just completely disbanded the team. <laughs> just done. Walked away. Like the whole thing was done and over with. And now can I ask you a question? Just I, I haven't seen the video. I haven't, you know what I mean? I whatever. I'm I'm just genuinely asking. Do you think that clearly that's a mistake? Do you think that's a that's a big enough mistake to completely destroy a business? You know what pisses me off? This is what makes me mad. And and because it, I truthfully just, and honestly, it's whatever guy said that shit should probably just take a fucking step back and take a break. But like you probably have investment and fucking people who rely on this shit and work at this company. And that's the shit that people don't think about sometimes. And it's like, let me, let me get this out banks. Cause yeah. this is, and I really want everyone to listen to what I'm about to say. All right, dude, if me and banks were in this situation, cause this is what I did. I tweeted a public Twitter video and I said, Hey, I'm going to air on a story. This is what you guys allegedly did. Please give me a statement. You have two hours to give me a statement. They give me a statement back within an hour and it's just bullshit. It's we're going to work with authorities. Dumb shit. Right. All right. After the team is over, they say they make another statement and say, sorry. All right. So look, if me and banks were in this situation, we would have reacted immediately uh, with yeah. a Twitter video. And we would have been like, we missed the ball, dude. Like we were thinking of other stuff. We shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Because you this, guys are this is the craziest right. part, right? Like this, obviously yeah. the, the alleged sexual assault has absolutely nothing to do with the org, right? It has nothing exactly. to do with these people. All they're really guilty of is missing the mark and completely fucking up how they handled a situation that one of their members, someone you're supposed to protect and fucking, is someone who's but how many how supposed many times, to be a part of your supposed family is is trying to like get, get you know get help from you in a, in a way and confiding in you and you just fucked that up but i don't think that that situation necessarily yeah exactly dude all the org had to do is be real and and, and yeah. be like i'm sorry we we messed up here but they didn't they tried to like be quiet and like put some cookie cutter BS statement about working with authorities out there. And they waited until the pressure was so bad that they just, the org ended like the website is gone. Like the, the, the Twitter's gone. Everything is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. You know what's the craziest, like, what the, fuck? You know what the craziest part is keep it's in the weirdest way, not in the way that they expected it, but in the weirdest way, this super unfortunate shit that happened to the homie Jeff. Shout out, Jeff. Sounds like you had a long week. I'm sorry, brother. But it's like what they were worried about happening, it happened. You know what I'm saying? No, it happened, it happened at the absolute worst max, extent of it. Yeah, the max. Like they could have got a negative light, <laughs> it's crazy. but a negative light versus like a, a nuclear bomb, like did nothing exist yeah. anymore. There is no esport team called Extra anymore. This is what pisses me off, dude. Why can't people just be real? Be I'm real, sick yeah. of this fake fucking professionalism bullshit, yeah, bro. It's, it's this team doesn't exist exist anymore because they I were have trying a little to bit, be I have, professional. I, I have a little bit, I have and this bullshit is already starting and I'm not saying bullshit, it's an incredible I'm blessed, it's an incredible thing that you know, phase is going public and all that stuff, but <clears throat> like I said, we have to be like extra you know, just extra by the book and just extra like on point, you know, naturally obviously, right? Um, this shit's getting really serious, but today I had to shoot this thing for um this really fucking bit, we Phase is about to drop the biggest fucking thing ever. I actually haven't even told you about Akeem. It's fucking next level. Um, wait, wait, wait. Tell me and then tell me just real quick and then editor cut it out. Like beep this part. Go ahead. We're doing Phase. It's finally here. Untold Stories, Top Moments from Worlds brings you closer than ever to the best players, top moments, and biggest events from all the past League of Legends World Championships. The rise of Faker, the origin of Silver Scrapes, the greatest match ever, and Freak's Basement. We've got all these stories and so much more. Untold Stories, Top Moments from Worlds. Listen for free exclusively on Spotify.
my God. How crazy is that? <laughs> Obviously, editor, cut out everything I just said, but you can leave in the Keem oh my god part. How fucking wild is that? <laughs> That's insane! Like, next level, like, life-changing shit. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, the uh, everything. Just everything, everything, everything. I can't talk too much, but the production, everything is going to be so on point. It's going to be fucking incredible. But that's not even why I brought that up. Um, I was I was doing a, pe a piece for, um, for the announcement for this thing that we're going to do, and they had a teleprompter and shit and like nobody showed me a script. I don't do scripts. I say fuck. You know what I mean? I say things in my own way and I'm not a scripted person. It just would. Wouldn't it feel weird to see me talk like proper and like read off a teleprompter? Wouldn't that feel weird? Oh my God. I can't do a script at all. I'll go more into it in a little bit, but, but that's, but that's what, what I'm saying. saying. Like it, it would be, it's so out of character. I'm uncomfortable doing it. I just know it'd be weird to watch it. It's just not me. So Right off the rip, I'm like, I, like I'm not gonna do. I'm gonna switch this up. He's like, well, the the script got approved by legal and all this and that. I'm like, bro, what? So we like slowly kind of change the script. Or whatever. Long story short, but um, I don't even really remember why I fucking brought this shit up. Oh, it's it's the real shit. It's like, dude, already. It's like, I'm like, bro, I need to. I need to always stay true to myself and always be real about shit. Whether people like it or not, whatever. I think that I've done a really good job at that over the last decade in this space. And it's not easy. It's not easy to do because you're pressured. You, you have so many opinions from so many different directions. And it's not easy to like maintain yourself, you know? Like the shit Dude, really I had I had no idea like what, you know, YouTube commentaries, right? They're uploading videos. They're just talking about stuff that's going on in the community or whatever. I had no idea, but most of those people like write scripts and yeah, I'm no, like, what really most people do that? Yeah. Really? So like now I'm having people cover for me on Drumler and they're like, yeah, I got to write this script. I'm like, you're writing a script. But that's like, why what? we do so just... well in like a podcast format. Cause we're not scripted people. You know what I mean? I'm like, just talk about it. Like, like you this know kind, the story. This kind of shit, this the way we're talking right now is the way we talk when cameras are off. It's the way we talk yeah. when cameras are on. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. It's not easy to it's not easy to do that. It's just just be a fucking good person and keep it keep it a buck. Like it, like what you said, just to wrap up that extra story, that esports story. It's like, bro, all you I, had to I've do, been... all you had to do is say, yo, we fucking blew it. Sorry. <laughs> um one of our guys, one of our owners missed the fucking ball and well, yeah, they would have got a little bit of flack, but I don't yeah, think they would have yeah. fucking disbanded, you know? Well, they I were actually... going to get in, they were going to get in trouble because like the, the leaked audio was like basically saying like, why are you telling people you got raped? Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something along those lines and it's, some it's other fucked. people on the team, I'm not sure if it was the owner was like picking on them for being raped by some dude or they said something along the lines. Well, that's why you don't hang out with gay dudes Bro, or how, something. How are people like, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't so, know. Wait, they said that? That's why you don't hang out with gay dudes. Oh, uh, they're allegedly, done. allegedly, they're that's done. what was said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, allegedly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's a. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Fuck those people. Anyways. Who cares? No. Irrelevant I just ass, irrelevant I ass feel, shitty team. I don't know. I feel I don't know bad. anything about I, them. I'm just ki sort of kidding. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of feel bad for um the the owners in a way because look, dude, like the other owners, makes mistakes. The other owners. Yeah, well, yeah. everybody makes mistakes, right? Just like why, why take accountability after your team is gone? Like I gave you two hours. Like no, here and here's the other thing. Some people were criticizing me. They're like, why, why did you give them only two hours, bro? It's two hours. Like what? If I well, asked it's, you, it's like, also it's also not a fair thing to say only two hours because they responded to you, so you're already in communication, right? Yeah, they were they responded. They gave me a statement. But at the end of the day, when I give someone like two hours to respond to what's going on, you just like it, you if you need a week to respond, then you're crafting a lie. I don't want you to craft a lie. The audience doesn't want to craft want you to craft a well, lie. Now that I'm in this, now that I'm in this like now that I'm in this corporate IPO shit, I do which I, I doubt is the reason why they would have needed more time or whatever. But I do understand that there there are in place checks and balances and you do have legal and there's a bunch of different like department heads that have to but approve this is shit a, like this that. This is a smaller org. Yeah, no, This is a smaller org. Like, Pepsi, like Dude, Pepsi ain't getting back to you in two hours. You know what I'm saying? 
It's true. That's a different story. Yeah, you know, yeah, it does yeah. have to go through multiple departments, and I, I, I totally get yeah. that. But with this esport org, it's it's it was founded in 2018. Uh, you know, they've been around for three years. They're trying, they're hustling. Uh, it's not multiple departments. It's two guys that run the whole show. And I was in contact with both of them. They had plenty of time to get me a statement. All they had to do is say, look, we dropped the ball. We deserve, uh, you know, criticism and we're trying to take accountability. We were wrong here. You know, that's all they had to say. Yep. I don't know. Something else happened to me. You're going to love this. And it's Go. definitely, uh, it obviously hasn't been spoken about. And I'm not throwing shade or anything like that. But um, Ethan randomly DM'd me and invited me on his podcast. And I'm curious as to why, because it seems kind of random. But like, interesting. And invited me down to a studio and stuff. And I'm, I'm definitely tempted to jump on that. I don't know. How do you feel about that? I think you should, I think you definitely should do it. Um, but, you know, he's had multiple people on there and then he like surprises them and does some like weird sneaky Well, I'm definitely thing. not I'm definitely not about to talk to Ethan without like a right of first pass cuz I'm not about to like I'm not he about to He streams it live though. Oh, does he stream it live? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I got everything's going good right now. I don't need fucking I, I don't need I guess if you're going energy. in I guess if you're going in the studio, maybe it's different, but like, you know, when they were doing live streams and stuff, uh, what the fuck is his name? Um, Oh, for some reason I'm drawing a break. Anyhow, he was having somebody on his live stream and he like surprised them with someone else and like backed on the debate. I don't know. He's a fucking snake. I want to trust him as far as I could throw him. I I know. I know. Um, no, I don't, I don't, I definitely don't. He's not a guy I trust. You know what I mean? I um, mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put something like that past them. I just, that's the thing. I just honestly don't know why. Cause we've talked about this before too. I don't know why he would have any issue with me outside of the fact that me and you are close friends. Well, he already told you in DMS that it, that was the reason, right? Yeah. But that's <laughs> so, that's such a weird reason that like hate somebody for so long and like <laughs> constantly try to like, like find you know constantly highlight anytime they've they not not even fumbled but like may have fumbled you know like oh look at what's going on with somebody who banks happens to know you know what i mean it's like dude give me a fucking break you know what i'm saying i just i just called him and um him and uh cat from insider out on twitter i sent them a twitter video last night and i said hey look guys i covered a serious story about sexual assault on dromler and um you know, uh, one of the esports organizations, one of their sponsors was Razor and they dropped them. And just so you know, I didn't even mention they were sponsored by Razor. I go, I didn't reach out to Razor for a statement. I didn't create a hate mob of yeah. people to go spam just put emails the at Razor. Put the I just put the information out. I go, the difference between me and Insider and me and H3H3 is I'm a journalist and you guys are activists. <laughs> like, you're literally activists. Like, you're running running a campaign to like fuck up people's money. Yeah. It's weird. Um, Uh, when's the last time, how, how's it been with you and Ethan? Have you guys gone at it recently? Yeah. I mean, you guys are just constantly always just throwing shots. It's actually kind of, uh, I don't even remember the last like thing. He had a, he had a, when I started dating the 20 year old, I don't know. We've talked about this fucking dude enough on the podcast that I don't know if I have to say this, but we're talking about each three, H three right now. We didn't. We've just been referring yeah. to him as Ethan, because for whatever fucking reason, this guy seems to be a main character on the show and in our lives. Which I don't he's know. uh he was talking about me like literally every week for like I don't know. I just stopped paying attention. Yeah. Uh, like from the time I was at your house, so it's kind of boring summer, like, at this point. It's like so. It's just been so much. I, I'm so over it. Like, well, I'm not over it, but I'm over it. If that makes sense, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm just you're exhausted. exhausted. You're exhausted on it. Yeah, well, <laughs> Jenks, Jenks, same wave, bro. Me and you it's till just the fucking a, end, it's baby. It's just annoying. It's like, yeah. what now? Like, bro, you're not canceling me. Like, I'm still. I'm still making content. I'm still getting views. I'm still breaking stories. Like I'm not going anywhere. Like the only time I leave is when I leave. When I say <laughs> like, shut up. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, wow. Um, 
What just I, happened? You got a message? Yeah, I got a text. Just somebody made me a fucking, made me something and it's dope. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Oh. I got a new, uh, I got a new side by side, uh, which is, uh, for those of you that don't know, it's like, you know, the, the ATVs, they're kind of like four wheelers, but they're like cars. They have steering wheels and shit. It's called a yep. side by side yep. or a yep. UTA. You love your um, little outdoorsy shit. It's adorable. Well, I got this new 230 acres and I got, I made trails all through the woods and I got a new side by side and it has four seats, bro. It's like a oh, fucking fire. safari. <laughs> I might, yeah, I might like have a, to pull up. I might, I might be moving to the, moving back to the East coast. Shut up. What? And, yep. I guess that's it's about time thing. you get out of there. Um, no, I love LA, man. I love LA. It's just, there's an incredible opportunity potentially ahead for me. Um, in the Miami area, can't talk too much about it, but I mean, I love LA. I love being here. Um, it serves me in every way that I care about. Um, but there's just, there just might be a, a, a really crazy opportunity. Um, any chance you're going to the Jake Paul fight, which is in, it's in Florida somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. What date is it? It's December 18th. I'm actually going. Probably I'm going not because I'm going to Art Basel beginning of December. And uh, it just sounds like too much Florida and too little time. I'm going to uh, see JP on a PJ. <laughs> That's awesome. That's I'm a bar. pretty excited. Yeah. That's a bar. You should be a rapper. <laughs> I'm sober. I've been sober for almost two full weeks. What? Oh, yeah. No wonders you're feeling good. Yeah, See, think, now and listen. I'm, and I'm thinking that I might close out the rest of the year like that. And honestly, I haven't I haven't had sex with a new partner. I have kind of like a main thing going on right now. But I haven't had sex with a new girl in like three weeks. Which wow. is fucking unheard of uh, for me. Say, actually, same. So Holy I'm like, shit. I've kind of given up my vices because I'm definitely an, a wild sex addict. Facts. And I think I'm starting to come to terms with the fact that I might be an alcoholic. Oh, <gasps> bro. Do you, okay, guys, can I tell the audience about the episode that we didn't upload because you lost internet? Yeah, I was hammered. Okay. So Banks gets on an episode. This is probably like two weeks ago. This is probably the last time you drank. All right. Banks gets on an episode and I was like, look, dude, I, I think, think you need rehab. Like we start the episode by me saying, I think he needs rehab. No, <laughs> it, no, no, it was fresh off the plane from fucking from New York. And I was still hammered and I fucked up my t long story short. When I was just in New York, I was in, in New York for NFT NYC. Somehow, some way, man, like I always like I always just. I'm I'm an on or off type of person. I really am, and I'm either I'm either doing it or I'm not doing it. And if bipolar. I'm, if I'm gonna no, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? No, it's just <laughs> if I'm if I'm in something, I'm in it. Like you know what I mean? If I want to fucking play baseball, I want to be the best baseball player ever. I want to know everything about it. You know what I'm saying? Like I consume myself in what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? And it just I go on these fucking benders, and I'm just like. I'm in New York for NFT NYC and I'm supposed to be there for this NFT shit. You guys have heard me talk about it. I fucking God knows how many times over the last several months. And you know, day one's great. Day two is great. And then I start fuck. And then I go bananas one of the nights and fucked up the rest of my trip. I fucked up my teeth. Uh, long story short. I know it sounds weird, but I just, I fucked one of my, one of my teeth up and it like super painful and just fucked up the rest of my trip. And I don't know. And also, too, anytime I'm off a breakup or just single in general, I just fuck everything. Like, I can't. Well, look, like, look, look. I, I, I want to say I, I can control it, but I, I almost can't. Like, I really I can't, can't allow you to say I fucked up my teeth without a follow-up question. How? I can't. I can't say it. Okay. Okay. I honestly right. cannot say it. Because it's right. really that bad. And it's nothing All that it's nothing like illegal. Uh, well, actually, it's probably is. I don't know, but it's not like it's not like I did anything wrong or bad or that I'm like ashamed of because I'm an open book. But it's just it's not tasteful, and I just don't want to talk about it on the podcast. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. it's just shitty. It just bottom line is I turned what should have been a great trip into a shitty trip, and I just I just do this thing, man. Nothing good happens when I drink, and I'm I just, knew I knew you were going too far when I brought it up, and I was like like kind of half joking about the rehab thing. 
uh, you got really defensive, and I was like, "Damn, maybe he really does need." Re- no, it's <laughs> no, it's because in my brain, it's like, no, this is the thing. I've I've taken like months off of drinking, and this that's kind of what I mean when I'm when I'm talking about like because there's levels of alcoholism, right? And there's like different yeah. definitions of it too. And what I mean by that is, I lived with an alcoholic. My dad pretty much was an alcoholic, but. Even beyond that, when I left the phase New York house and I moved back home and then I, you know, I had that fucking couple months stretch where I just was not, I was out of commission. But then remember I moved in with all my homies, like my hometown homies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of my hometown friends was like a true to it alcoholic, like would crack open like nips, which are little mini bottles of like vodka, for example, would crack yeah. those open in the morning and slam like six of them before work and then get hammered. It would just always be ch- hammered drunk. And it's like, dude, this kid's a fucking alcoholic. Like we had an intervention. Like we had a, like on like a dangerous, like health level. Right. But yeah. in my case, I can stop at any time. Like really like this past two weeks, I'm not having withdrawals. I'm not like craving a drink or anything like that. Um, but it's, I create issues for myself when I drink. You know what I'm saying? Like I fucked up that hotel room when I was drunk and like just a bunch of shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like you just Me too. I lose I, mean, I lose shit. I lose my fuck I get into fights and shit sometimes. Like just bad things happen when I'm fucking drunk. Like and some some good things happen too. You know, you build friendships and relationships and crack humor you have some great and, memories, and, and great, yeah. just funny moments and stuff and like you're living in that party lifestyle so girls around and all that shit. And it's like some good comes with it, but like enough bad and like the the bad just outweighs the good. And also the bad is liable to be really fucking bad. And that goes back to what yeah. I said about my tooth. Like, like I might have to get fucking veneers. Cause like I fucked up the well, enamel. The good, on my, I don't know how the to The good it. has, the good has a ceiling, right? It can only be so good. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to go out get hammered and wake up with a million dollars in my fucking bank account or wake up married to the girl that I love. You know what I mean? Like the the bad the bad the ceiling is you could death. Die. Yeah, you could yeah. fucking die. You could lose something important. You could fuck yeah. up your next day, you which was an important. Someone. Day. Yeah, you could fucking, you know, exactly, exactly. And the fact that I could fuck up my teeth, I love my teeth. I don't have fucking veneers. I've never had braces. I just like my teeth. I've never had an issue with my teeth. I was ready to roll with my teeth that I was given for the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. like every time I go to the dentist, they're like, your teeth are great. Whatever. I just like my fucking teeth, right? It's a part of my fucking body. I'm going to have to live with it for the rest of my life. I like it. I just, I'm cool with it. And the fact that I could fuck up my teeth, like it just, it it's like, if I could do that, because I had no intention of doing that, it's not like I didn't care to not do that. If I could do that, I could have easily, just as easily fucked up and f- tripped and fell and killed myself or like walked in front of a car, got hit by a car, or fell off a balcony or something. Like It's like those fuck-ups are equal in the sense of like they just shouldn't have happened. I obviously didn't want them to happen. And if I was in a sober mindset, then I, I wouldn't have allowed that to happen just like I wouldn't allow myself to fall off a balcony. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Dude, I ha- I've, yeah, I've, I've been so blessed. I have good teeth, too. They're yellow as shit because I drink coffee and fucking smoke and everything else. But, um, dude, when the pandemic hit, I'm like, I'm not going to a dentist. Fuck that. I don't want to be around people, right? So from the pandemic until about, uh, I want to say like two weeks ago was the first time I was at a dentist. And I know, I know that I'm getting cavities. Like I, dude, I haven't been there in two years, bro. You're supposed to go for your fucking in every six months. So I'm going in, they're cleaning my fucking teeth. And I'm like, here we go. They do the x-rays. She goes, no cavities. I'm like, what? Really? Yeah, that's (laughs) awesome. No, some people, it's just genetics at the end of the day. Some people, yeah, I rarely like... I don't, have, you know what I mean? I rarely get sick, knock on fucking wood. God bless me. I rarely like, will just shit like that just doesn't happen for me. And again, knock on wood. Like I really hope that, that trend continues, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know. So that's, that's what I mean by when I say like, and I'm starting to kind of like come to terms with the fact that I might be an alcoholic. I'm not even necessarily sure like medically by definition what that word means, but it's like, I just know for sure I want to close out the year sober and who knows, maybe go even deeper than that. I just, I have so much potential. So much is going good for me right now. And I think we talked about this on the last episode, but it's like, 
when you, when all your fucking dreams have come true, but still you can wake up and like have sad days, it's like you really got to take a step back and fucking recalibrate and reprioritize because Absolutely. it's like, fuck, man. Like if I can't be happy in this situation, and again, I said this last time, but it almost makes it worse. Like you're, you're looking out at a beautiful view. You have a beautiful house. You have a beautiful fucking girl. You have a bunch of fucking people who love you and care about you and, you know, really talented people working around you and who, you know what I mean? Who respect you and you, you know, your financial situation is fucking up and you're fuck, just, everything is just exactly, you're taking care of your family. Like this is dream come true shit. You know, you're going to be able to take care of your family for the rest of your life, but you're still upset. You're still sad. You're still, you still feel like a sense of like just emptiness like that's like that's do you, you know got- how many times do you know how many times i've been jealous of the guy that works for someone else he makes like forty thousand dollars a year he goes he clocks in he likes his job and then he leaves because they're just happy like, they're happy and and dude once you clock off you don't think about work like fuck it oh like yeah no the world we live in, your in life. And not to be like narcissistic about it and just talk about our fucking experience but like, yeah, that's, I work, I work yeah, all day long, It's just constantly, bro. yeah, it's constant. <laughs> when I'm playing video games, like I'm still technically working. <laughs> yeah, no, but, um, no, no, but I understand what you're saying. It sounds stupid and people are going to eye roll at that. But like, no, like if you're, if, if what you mean by that is just like, yeah, like this and that, and I'm going to talk about this or I should pick up on that or, oh, this game is doing this and this would be a good idea. And this, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. I know what you mean though. And it's just, I yeah, don't know, man. I don't know. I'm it's just, a different vibe. I also have really, really good news that I can't really say on air, but I can tell you the editor can beep it. Like, right, we got two, uh, secrets, you don't have to two be- secrets on the story. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, me and Fousey, uh with Happy Punch, we signed a like multi-million, like big, big, big deal. Yeah. What do you that's, think about that's, that? That's incredible. I'm First of all, I'm so happy for Fousey. Because yeah, what you just yeah. told me is a huge fucking deal. Huge deal. And I'm looking forward to it. That's awesome. And you know what the best part is? Both of our secrets have to do with content. And great, yep. top-tier quality content. It's awesome. Yeah. You love to see uh, it. You love to see it. I mean, it. I'm retiring. I'm not going to be the host of Drumbler, but you know I'm still working. Like, I'm still going to be around. I'm still working. I just, I have a lot of things that I'm planning on doing, you know? No, that's a big one. And I'm, I'm super happy for you. Is that is that deal 100%? Is it closed? Signed. No signed. Way. Done. Yeah. Congrats, man. That's fucking huge. Yeah. Happy for you, bro. We're winning. We're winning. We should be happy. We should pay it forward. Good energy. I really want to have a guest on next week. We really need a guest on next week. We're, we have such busy lives, but like most podcasts, they have a team, right? And then that team emails people and sets up like, we don't have a team. <laughs> no, I mean, we, we, ha- we kind of do, but it's always like, what about this TikToker and shit? And it, it's like, at no, this but point, like, this show is so like, so organic and authentic that, and there really is, we do have our own style and what we like to talk about and shit. And it just feels like off brand. Like, what the fuck are we going to talk to? Because, like, every other podcast has a script. Like, when I went on BFF, like, bro, they had a thousand people working for them. They had the questions already lined up. Like, you know, same thing with like uh, Ethan and his show. And, like, yeah, I, this I don't know, is, any- this really is just an open form, like, conversation. <laughs> and I know a lot of you guys love that shit, but it's like we need the right guests, you know? Yeah. I kind so of, I'm going to lock in Jeff. I love that fucking guy. And I want to I want to talk to him. I think we'd have a great conversation with him. Wait, the the kid that got sexually assaulted? No, Jeff the barber, man. <laughs> yeah, I forgot <laughs> that. I forgot that that kid. I forgot that. that I was that's confused. That was. I was no, confused. No, Jeff, David Dobrik's Jeff. <laughs> Because <laughs> earlier in the show, you're like, I love you, Jeff. <laughs> so, that brought it back when you said, I love you, Jeff. You know, we can have Jeff on. That's good. You know, Jeff's trying to box people. I mean, he's called out Austin McBroom multiple times. Will Austin McBroom oh my be God, able to another get crazy the DM I got. iDubs hit me up. Let me read this conversation. This is hilarious. I hope he doesn't mind that I'm sharing this. No, I guess it's he's pump. looking for people to box. No, you know, is so, that why so, he hit so, you? What a random thing for him to hit me up about. But he goes, hey, Banks, I'm looking for an opponent to box for charity. Are you down? Rice wiped out or wimped out. 
He said wiped, but he, he clearly meant wimped. Rice wimped out, and my latest opponent needs surgery. I think it would be an interesting matchup. I said, laugh my ass off, I'm honored, but probably passing on this. Jake offered me a fight years ago when I was doing the vlogs, and I feel like I missed the boat on the whole thing. Business in general is booming right now, and almost none of it has anything to do with my own social media, which has been super refreshing and relaxing, which is obviously all true. Yeah. Um, everything's been great lately, and I'm just going to continue on this stride, but I appreciate it nonetheless. I'm surprised Rice backed down whatever I talked to him. Is that sick that you're pursuing that, though? You should just... I said he should just box like a pretty TikTok kid because that's... Well, I like, dubs I dubs versus too. one of these, like... That's okay. just that's just a win, right? He, he he hit me up saying the same thing that he wanted to box me. I said, look, I go, I dubs, I don't want to box you. There's only one person I'll box, and that's Ethan, right? Yeah. And he, I think he even aired out my DMs on his uh, on his uh, video where he no, was he told, That's Rice what gun. I was going to get to. He told me that he's hit up so many fucking people. And it's but been listen, this is what I dubs I dubs. If you're listening to this by any chance, this is what you need to do. And I know I've already told you in DMs, but you need to fight a bad guy. I'm telling you, you versus J Station, like that is the fight that people want to see. Oh, that would be right? fire. That would be fire. You know, you're coming off of would that J whole Station thing where people it? were calling you a cuck or whatever. Like you need a win. You need to fight a bad guy. If you fight a good guy and you lose, like uh, that's just bad. And I think J Station would do it, yeah. Yeah, he should. He should do that. J Station's uh, actually a really good, really good idea. I'm going to hit him on that, too, because that would be a fucking sick one to see. What would help him is he fought me. It, like, I get, like, if he fought me, that would be, like, a Before big Before I win came for up on all this NFT but, shit, not to sound like a broken record, but honestly, I was thinking to myself, like, damn, I really fucking missed the boat on this, like, boxing shit. Like, whether it be, like, boxing or, like, being a part of the business or whatever, like Jake was on that shit so fucking early and it, he just, he, he, he fucking, you know, he pursued it and he's like the king of this shit now, which is really fucking cool for him. But it's like, you know, what's, you know, what's crazy. Uh, I can't think of his name, but here's the whole history of YouTube boxing. There's one guy that calls out Joe Weller, Joe Weller and that guy, they get in a ring and they make a YouTube video that gets 8 million views. It pops off, right? Yeah. I can't think of that other guy for some reason. Joe Weller wins and he goes, I want to fight you, KSI. You're next. And that's what started YouTube boxing. Yeah, it is. Two people, two people that don't box anymore. They started this entire wave. It was UK YouTube. They deserve all the credit for it. Bless them. Uh, and it was just all about calling out a bigger name, calling out a bigger name. I Joe appreciate had to call you came. Out a big I, name. I think cr giving people credit is really important, and you never fail to do that. You're the first guy who's like, "Yo, these are the people that everybody should thank for this." It's awesome. I think we're, I think we're like running on time. What, what? Fifty minutes? Forty-eight minutes? Yeah, what do you we say wrap we wrap this up? It's been a fucking lovely episode. It's been a great conversation. I love you, Keemstar. I love you too. And I'm going to treat this uh, how I do with all the ladies I love. And I'm going to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna not wrap it up and continue talking because that's how I treat all the girls that I fuck with too. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll do we'll do handle that after. My I have a new assistant as well. His name's Ryan. He's sitting on the couch and he's pointing at his laptop because I have to do an ad read. So it'll probably be for an ad that you guys heard at some point, you know, before or middle or i don't know but yeah i gotta you know, go do that instead of instead of thinking of a different emoji i was thinking from now on can we have the same emoji like on every episode that way when we see no, that emoji, it's kind of fun it's, it's fun basement. no it's fun to switch it up it's fun because that's part of the show you know it's part of it's part of it we come up with a funny emoji whatever whatever and it's like it separates the episodes because then people like different shit and like you can, I don't know. I like the different emojis. How I about want this? the cow emoji this? this week. Uh -oh. Why? I just want it. I don't know. Okay, we're we're never going to use the cow emoji. Let's <laughs> give, you don't know. We, we could fucking, we could be talking about milk one day and use the cow emoji. I don't know. Or the beef industry, the beef industry and beyond meat and shit. Like that's, that's something we could definitely talk about, but whatever. We'll use the fucking cow emoji guys. Um, we don't have a comment section on Spotify. The only way that we can see your guys' feedback, questions, comments, um, criticisms for the show, which we love seeing all that shit, by the way, um, is through Twitter. So we ask that you guys tweet myself and Keemstar with an emoji each week so we can kind of weed out the tweets. 
Uh, this week's emoji is a cow emoji. So go tweet me and Keemstar. Let us know what you guys thought about the show. Um, any questions, comments. And honestly, hit us up about the emoji idea. Should we pick an emoji? Maybe throw another emoji in the tweet. We could kind of get a gauge of which emoji you guys would want our, the modest basement emoji to be. I don't know. Clearly, it should be a couch because that's kind of our thing, right? But um, I don't know. Let us know so we know. Um, but yeah, that's been it. I'm on a fucking. And, I had a great day. Kim had a great day. It's great. It's love. And Cow bef- emoji. Before before we go, I just want to say um, uh, we would like to lie to you again and say next week we're gonna have a guest. No, we are no. We're ha- <laughs> no. We're gonna have a fucking guest. See you guys next week. I love you guys. Mom's baby.